Good morning. I'm glad to see everybody here today. The uh, for all of you that's been saying it's been way too dry. The yesterday was your fault. So, but it's a beautiful day out there today, and we're glad to be in in the Lord's house. Um, a couple of things uh, real quick before we get started is we will have Halloween on the square on Thursday afternoon and evening. So uh, if we'd like to have some people, you can come in costume. Uh, the, they said wear something ugly. I thought I'd go like myself. So, But uh, we'll be over there with the table. We're giving out candy and then also some little booklet things for the kids. And uh, But, but if we'd like to have a few folks over there to kind of uh, help hand things out and, and welcome the kids as they come around. We will be just east of the REMC building is where our spot is. And we'll be there rain or shine. So, uh, so hopefully we'll see you all over there. If you're planning on being over there or if you think you might come, just let me know at the back so we kind of have an idea about who all is going to be there. Um, it's not one of those that I really want to do by myself, but uh, so we hope to see some other folks there. Uh, five. You candy? Uh, we've got a bunch, so I, you can look in there. We need enough candy for 400 kids. They said plan on 400 kids. And uh, we've got enough little brochures, so we can, we can always use some. It's getting stacked on, on a chair in Kathy's office, so if you want to bring some candy in or bring it in that day, that's, that's fine too. And uh, so also, um, uh, Spaghetti dinner, uh, Friday the, the 8th from 4 to 7, and uh, $8 for adults, $4 for children. Uh, carryouts available, we're going to have tickets to start selling, uh, we'll be working on those Monday or Tuesday, and, um, and to hand those out. We would like to get as many sold ahead of time as possible so that Tawny knows how much to buy. But there will still be tickets at the door and, and all those sort of things. And, and all the proceeds will go for, for the building repairs and, and all of that. And uh, dessert, it's, it's salad, bread, spaghetti. And then we're going to have another table set up for desserts. That will be by donation. So she's got a sheet for desserts and a sheet for help. And, uh, and all those sort of things. So uh, you can either see her or we can have them on the table in the back or whatever. Or, yeah, or just pass it around. That's a good thing. So uh, it, that's a pretty good price. And so we kind of spread the word around on, on all, all those things. Two weeks from today uh, is our charge conference. And it's always good to have several people go down to, in, to Terre Haute for that uh, as we uh, gather with about half the other churches in the district to, to take care of, of uh of that business of the church. Um, the, um, we want to really thank everybody for all they did through the festival. Uh, everything went really well. Of course, we had some really good weather. And, and like we said last week, Miriam had the worst of it sitting over there in an umbrella on the day that she was over there in the rain. But, but um, uh, the, uh, the, the parking lot brought in 7,125. That's more than we've ever brought in there. Uh, the, um, the flea market, Randy had a goal of $1,500. And um, we didn't get $1,500. We got $2,233. So there were a lot of you I know that helped on that week before to get everything sorted and priced there were a lot of people that helped work some of our celebrate recovery folks were were there to help out with all of that too and and uh, so you know and I've told you before you know Thursday night and back there and what we do with them that's church uh, just as much as it is in here with us on Sunday mornings and they consider this to be their church and so they when it came to those things they they pitched in because it was their church and Randy couldn't have done a lot of them with, without that some of them were there and then the, the soup was I think 621 is that right 641 so, and that was, we'd never been, with it. we were hoping to hit 500 on that. So, the Lord blessed us in a lot of ways on those three things. And I think he's, to me, I think he's telling us that he's with us as we try to do these things to, to take care of the church. And speaking of all of that, um, kind of an update on the, uh, the grants and all. We, we did get three grants submitted. 
Uh, one was for uh, uh, about $2,500 to help pay for the architect's assessment and all those things that, that we needed to have done. Uh, there was uh, one for $50,000, which is a matching grant, and if that, we get that, it's what we've put the $7,000 and a lot of other things towards. Uh, we've got to come up with 50000 to match that. That's for the roof and the bricks. And, uh, but if we don't come up with the 50000 to match whatever they've got, we've got to come up with the 130000 it's going to take to do all of that. So those are some things. But we have applied for that grant. We're, we're awaiting it. And then we've, um, we've applied for a grant for the, um, the, the sound and the AV systems through the, the United Methodist Foundation. And so those were all submitted um, earlier this month, and then we've got one more that's going in for the folks across the street uh, by the end of November that, um, that we're going to try to, uh, to acquire that money as well. Mark Spellbring did 90% of the work on the grants and worked pretty hard on those things. So if you see him, tell him thank you because we got notified uh, Thursday that the grant for the architect, the $2,500 towards the $5,000 bill, we get, we received that. Uh, the, or we will receive it. We've got approved. They're going to give it to us. So that's coming. Which um, uh, The architect's plan is something that we have to have done for two reasons. Number one was so that we understand everything that needs to be done. They can see things that we don't see. They've already pointed out a couple, th or he has pointed out a couple things to us um, and stuff that we... It's like we talked about. There's things you walk by every day, and because you walk by them every day, you don't notice them anymore. And so he's he's helped identify some of those things. And then just to get that big grant, we need to show them we've done our due diligence and trying to figure out everything that's wrong and and all that. So we we've been able to cut that architecture bill in half because of the the grant that we got from those things. Um, we. Uh, We've, as we told you all earlier on, one of the big windstorms, we lost, lost about 100 shingles on the church. And we put in a claim to the insurance company and all those things like normal on that. But uh, we were going to, part of the plan is to replace the whole church. Well, we can't let the, I mean, not the whole church. <laughs> The whole roof, and because it is getting some age on it and all of that, and with those shingles. But uh, when one of the roofing guys was up there looking at it a week or so ago, he came back and he said, "You need to just fix. You need to just repair what you can on the roof right now because you need to spend all your money on the bricks. That the the uh, uh, that that's where the real problem is, and so." Through his estimate and what we decided at the board meeting the other night is we are going to have those hundred shingles replaced for now until we see what happens with the grants and all that so that and that's the difference between about thirty four thousand and uh, twenty five hundred dollars so we're going to spend the twenty five hundred dollars to have the roof taken care of so we don't have leaks from the snow and, and all, all of that this winter while we uh, we repair we prepare to do the uh, the bricks and the total roof uh, later on, hopefully sometime next spring or whatever. So those, uh, we do, like I, I told you a few weeks ago, we'll try to keep everybody posted on all, all those things, but it's also something that everybody needs to keep in mind that, that you know, it, it, takes, it takes dollars to do that. And uh, so... Uh, yes, ma'am, whoever that was. Oh, there. <laughs> Take, I can't hardly see beyond the first pew with my glasses on. I can't see on what's on the pul pulpit with my glasses off. So, uh, I was just going to report that the roof was repaired on Friday. Okay, cool. Because they called and said with all the rain coming in, he wanted to get it buttoned up all right. before it. So it is done. All right, good. Good deal. So... <laughs> And some of those things and that kind of assessments and some of those uh, and that preparation for all that came from that campaign uh, uh, committee that's made up of several of the folks here in the church that kind of got that stuff together and just reported that back to us at the board, board meeting. So that was, uh, uh, that was really good. One of the things we're going to start doing next week, uh, kind of adding to our service, is called Symbols of Our Faith.
And we're going to take a little bit of time between the opening and before the kids come up and talk about why do we have some of the stuff we have hanging around. You know, why do we do stained glass windows? Why do we have candles in the front? And, uh, and, and just a lot of the why do we have a table sitting up here in the middle of everything? And just kind of take one thing each week and just kind of go through that just for. And then when we move towards Christmas, why we do some of the things around Christmas that, that we do. So that's coming up. Um, the other thing is, I want to tell everybody happy anniversary. You know this anniversary, right? Yes. Well, you know, one year ago today, it was, it was the, the first thing, and then so you could judge what's happened through the life, but it is one year. So, and, uh, and I appreciate being here for that year, and thank everybody for all the support. So, uh, but. Um, the last thing is, Susan has a really nice thank you in there uh, about all this, the things for the bridge and, and all the people listed, and, or the bridge, the parking lot. So uh, uh, take some time to read that, and we really, really appreciate everything. So, and all the work that was done. And, and uh, so, any other announcements? All right, then let's prepare our hearts and our minds for our times with the, the Lord today. next song is one of my favorites and Charla Malone's and if you've never been to an Emmaus walk I would strongly encourage you to do that this is where I learned this song and some other people so when we do those woos in there that's where we got it <laughs> my life is in you Lord my strength is in you Lord my hope is in you Lord in you my life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, it's in you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. With all of my life. With all of my strength. You're not smile singing that. We worship you.
As we gather in the house of the Lord, let us keep our ears open and watch our words. When you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. Keep all the promises you make to Him. Lord, don't let our mouths make us sin. That would make God angry. God, we come to listen to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you have brought each of us safely to this place. We gladly surrender our lives to you in worship and praise. As we gather, we remember those who are not with us today. For those who are sick, we ask for healing. And for those away from us, we ask for your blessing to be on them. We invite your beautiful Holy Spirit to move freely amongst us. Come dwell in each of our hearts. Equip us, challenge us, comfort us, teach us, inspire us as we learn more about your majestic ways. Father, as we meet now, may we behold your beauty and encounter your grace. We ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus, in whose name we gather, we pray, and we worship. Amen. You may be seated. And the kids can come up. I'm going to show you what we're doing. But I only got two hands. Who wants the first one? Okay, here. You want the second one? You want this? Sure. Sure. You're going to make me stretch, huh? <laughs> All right. Here. Man, you're jumping up when you see the big money coming. All right. Now everybody see what you got, right? All right, I want to see that plate up there. I want everybody to, to, to put two coins in there. And you guys can pick out whatever coins you want. Yeah. Now what? Now, if you guys want to, want to put any more in there, you can put more in there out of all, that, all the, the big all of group it? of money. Huh? All of it? You can put all of it in there if you want. Okay. But now, who put the most in? The first time around, who put the most in? I don't know. You don't know? None of us. Huh? Um, What'd you put in? Two. Two what? Cents. Cents. Two cents? Oh. What'd you put in? Two dimes. Two dimes? How much is that? 20 cents? How much you put in? I don't know. You don't know? You had nickels, so you put in a dime, or 10 cents. How much did you put? Do you know? 2 cents. 30. All right. So who gave the most? You think so? Yes. No, she gave the most. That first time through, she gave the most. Do you know why she gave the most? Why? Because it's not about how much it adds up to. What it amounts is what do you have to give? Everybody, 
had a lot left over. You had 50 cents, you gave 20. You had 25 cents, you gave 10. You had a whole handful, and you had a whole handful. She had two cents, and she put everything in. That was all she had. And so when you have a whole lot to give, it's easy to, to give a couple of coins or just a little bit here and there because it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But when you give everything you got, what does that usually mean? It means that we really trust God to take care of us. Because if you gave it all away, what are you going to do about the, the second go around? Do you have anything to give? Or if you got to buy something? Or if you need to get lunch? So, but if you trust in, in God, and there's, Jesus tells the story of somebody that had a whole lot of stuff to, to give. And they made a big deal out of it. Dropped it and made a whole lot of noise in the pan. Kind of like your guys did in that one up there. But then there was a poor old lady over to the side. All she had and everything she owned was two pennies. And she put in all that. And Jesus said she gave more than the guy that dumped a whole bag in. Because that was all she had. And that showed that she trusted God to take care of this afternoon, tomorrow, and the day after. And it's easy to, to give when we got plenty to give. But it's hard to give when we don't have much. But when we give... Especially when we give what we think God wants us to give. Do you know what happens? What? He gives us a whole lot more. And He takes care of us and He makes sure that we have all the things we need. So remember that sometimes when it comes time to give or, and, or there's some, you see somebody that, that needs something and you have it and maybe all you got but you want to share it with them. That, that God blesses you through that. And that's given a whole lot more. You know, that's one thing if you got two sandwiches, somebody didn't have one, you give them one. But if you see somebody that hadn't eaten in a few days, and you got one sandwich and that's all you got, and you give that to them so that they can have it, you know, that, that means a whole lot more because then you're going you're gonna to be hungry. You're giving them a whole lot more because you gave up your lunch. What about hundred and so, sandwiches? What? What about hundred sandwiches? hundred sandwiches? That'd be good too. <laughs> so, yeah. So remember those things. It's not always about just how much you may put in. It's about what are you able to give and what do you give out of, out of faith that you have in Christ and what do you do about the people that are in need around you. So it's not about the total amount. It's about what are you called, what does God do, what does He want you to give, and how much we do give. So you all can go downstairs with whoever's Meredith. Before you go downstairs, yes. we had one last week, if everybody remembers, it was about where everybody ended up with a wad of money for, or not a wad, but a whole bunch of change in their hands. And tell them what they, what they did with that. They put it all in the offering. They go, if you didn't hear, when they got downstairs, they put it all in the offering downstairs. Nobody carried any of it home, though they gave it all. So, so that was really cool. All right. It's time for a sharing of our, our joys and concerns. Of course, we want to recognize again the blessings that God gave us through the, the festival and the things we were able to do and, and the blessings that were there. But what other blessings or concerns do we have today? Or any prayer needs? Or Oh, I do want to... It is a, 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 a praise or a celebration or whatever. Kristen got back from Africa this week and... and uh, so she's, she's all fired up about that. And, and uh, the only thing she brought back with her was souvenirs. <laughs> That's good for some of the areas that are over there that she was in and all of that. So, so we're thankful about all those. And our other daughter-in-law, Jenna, uh, told everybody yesterday that she is a couple of months along in grandson, grandchild. I don't know if it's a son or a girl. Number six is on the way. So... And it's uh, May is about the, that, uh, the time that it's, it's due. So we're, we're really joyful about that. And anything else this morning? All righty. Let's bow our heads. Or let's join our voices in our chorus for my tribute.
Let's bow our heads. Father, we do thank you for this place that we have to gather in today and for the, the things that, that you have done among us with these things so far. And we just pray for our congregation and for this building in which we gather. Lord, that, that you will continue to, to bless us in this place and through this place. Lord, we pray for one another because every one of us here is a, a sinner saved by your grace. We all fall short, Lord, and, and we make our mistakes. But we know that you are loving, forgiving, gracious God. And that's why we gather here today to celebrate, to draw close to you and all of these things. Lord, we pray for the soldiers and their families. Lord, we pray for uh, our nation and its leaders. And Lord, we just ask you to guide these, these local elections and things that are coming up, that, that your will be done. And Lord, we, we pray for our denomination and for all that's going on with that. And we just think of your grace and goodness for us all as we, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we ask the ushers to come forward for today's offering. Let's pray. Father Almighty, you have given us many blessings. We come to you today in thanksgiving and our hearts look heavenward. You have given us a home to take shelter in, clothes to make us warm, food to nourish our body, and water to keep us from being thirsty. You have given us eyes to see your beautiful creations, a nose to smell the scent of the flowers, ears to hear the birds humming so sweetly in the morning. You have given us the hands to touch the lives of many. For all these gifts you have showered upon us, we offer to you these simple presents. May they be put to good use of the community. You have showed us what it means to be generous, and we want to pay it forward to our church. Grant the youth the same generosity you have taught us, and that they may understand what it means to be your child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated.
I'm going to read to you today out, out of Luke chapter 18, starting with verse 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like everybody else. The robbers, the evildoers, the adulterers, or even like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. <laughs> In this story that, that Jesus is telling, it was something that, that, like a lot of the parables, or most all of the parables that Jesus told, he took things out of real life, and he would build a story about them, things that people saw and things that they witnessed. And one of the things about the, the Pharisees, but there were really, there were some good Pharisees in, in the Gospels. You know, sometimes when we, we throw that name out there, everybody always thinks of bad things. But, you know, Joseph of Arimathea, the, that, that put Jesus in his own tomb. Uh, and uh, Nicodemus, that we read about in John, and again, and stands up for Jesus at the, at the cross and at the crucifixion. They were among some of the others, and there are places... There were, there were Pharisees that, that had accepted Christ along the way. But there were others that, that you know, like we would say today, they were the, the holier-than-thou crowd. And they liked to show it. And, and there's, if there's one group that Jesus talks about and uses in that example more in the Gospels than any other, it's the Pharisees. Because they would, they would do a lot of things like that. In, in the Old Testament, it says that everybody was to have a tassel on the bottoms of their clothes. And so that was to remind them when they, they it was on their inner garment, so that when they took their clothes off and they did those things to remind them that we belong to God. It was, it was a constant reminder to them that, that nobody else could see. It was just between them and God as a personal reminder. And, uh, but the Pharisees, by Jesus' day, had turned their tassels into these great big things that would be about six or eight inches big and about that big around that they would have on four of them around the bottom. And, and some of them called them the street sweepers because they'd walk down the street and have big old tassels that go back and forth and kind of sweep things off as they, they went. And, uh, and, and, you know, and, and the only reason that you'd have something like that was for for show so that everybody else could see. In Matthew, Jesus talks about the, the Pharisees that when they would fast, they would put white powder on their faces and go moaning around all, oh, I haven't eaten in a day. I haven't, you know, I've been fasting so that everybody else could see that they were fasting. And you know, it takes a lot of days of not eating for your face to become pale. So they would put that powder on to make it look so everybody could say, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm fasting. And that kind of stuff. Well, that was to bring attention to themselves. And one of the things that he talks about as well, not just in this story, but, but also in Matthew, is that the Pharisees like to pray about themselves. And that's the term that he uses here, that the Pharisee stood up to pray about himself. Now, a lot of times we do that, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, except when you're praying about yourself to everybody else. And that's what the Pharisees had a tendency to do. And, and that's what he talks about in Matthew, that they would stand on the street corners with their hands up in the air and pray everybody else could hear what they were praying. And so it wasn't even about the, the prayer. <coughs> It was about the self-recognition. And actually, in that part, Jesus says, you know, they got their recognition for their prayers from people. You need to pray by yourself to God to get the recognition of your prayers from God. And so, and this kind of what was, so when Jesus brings up this story about this guy today, this was not something that was just something made up, but, so, but something that happened all the time. Because the, the Pharisees thought that they were 
better than everybody and they worked at being better than everybody else they followed the, the laws and that's what made them Pharisees you know they, they'd sat down and decided if the book says if the law of Moses says don't work on Sunday well what's work when does Sunday start when is it over? Well, how far can I go? How much can I, you know, and we've talked about some of those things. And they, they learned those things so that they could be specific. So they could say they followed all of them. And Paul even talks about that. And when he says, you know, when it comes to following the law, he said, I was faultless. I was perfect. I didn't do anything wrong. That's kind of the way they, and he said, but you know what? I count that all as, as garbage. He says, wad it up, throw it away. Because it doesn't mean anything. But these Pharisees, I'll do that. And so here this man stands up in the middle of the temple with the crowds around. You know, wasn't at home, wasn't in his bedroom, wasn't by himself. And calls out, you know, that uh, look at me, Lord, how great I am. I'm not like everybody else. See how good I, you know, and the point is, I'm better than everybody else. I don't do all the things that they do. I avoid all that stuff. And he says, you know, and, and I'm not like everyone. I'm not like the evildoers, which for them, that was everybody. It wasn't a Pharisee. You were, you were the, the evildoer. I'm not like the rest of them. I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. I'm not an adulterer, you know, and, and I'm not all these. And I am not like him. Oops, sorry, Alex. <laughs> I'll point this way. <laughs> not, not like him over there. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's what he says. I'm not like that tax collector. And one of the things you got to remember is that tax collectors were, they were the bottom of the bottom. They were worse than the prostitutes. They were worse than the thieves. When it comes to the way people thought about them, they were as bad because it wasn't, the, it's not like today working for the IRS. These guys worked for the Roman government. They extorted money out of people to pay for the invading, occupying army to be there to oppress their brothers and sisters living in their, their town and things. And then, once they got enough money to support the Romans, they could even get more money for themselves. And most of them got wealthy. And the Romans would give them two soldiers to enforce everything. So they didn't have any. Most of them became very wealthy. They were despised. But we see this tax collector coming in and, and realizing the, the error of his ways. And where the Pharisees standing there in the crowd with his hands all up saying, look at me, and praying about himself, not praying to God, but praying about himself. And, you know, and the, and the Pharisee even said, you know, I, I fast twice a week. There's, there's nothing in the, the Old Testament about fasting except for one, one item. It says on the Day of Atonement, one day a year. If you hear about that today. You're supposed to fast all that day. But the, the thing about fasting once or twice, two, three times a week, there's nothing about those things in there. there there's nothing against it, but that's what this Pharisee says. I fast twice a week. They actually fasted, we know from writings, Mondays and Thursdays. <clears throat> the other thing that he says is I give a tenth of everything I own. Now, the Mosaic Law says a tenth of, uh, of uh, every, all of your income. But they said, I give a tenth of everything. I say, I go above what everybody else does because I'm not like everybody else. So I give this extra money and all that and look at me, what I am. And I am thankful that I am not like him. <laughs> so I may have to tie that hand back there. But, but uh and because the, the, those tax collectors were so despised. They were so despised that people would throw rocks at them coming down the street. They would not let their kids associate them. They were pretty well shunned by all the community. But here's this man that comes in, doesn't even come to where everybody else is at, goes over by himself, beats his chest. Have, have you ever been in that kind of sorrow? that you, all you got to do is beat your chest. Or you feel that bad about what's going on or around you or you're in that much grief that you just beat your chest. And that's what he's doing. He's beating his chest and saying, Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner. Now even those words right there, you know, he, he's not coming to God with anything. 
And he's saying, have mercy on me. He doesn't say, Lord, show me your grace. He says, have mercy on me. Because remember that grace is getting more good than you deserve. Mercy is not being punished to the extent you deserve. He knows what, how he's been. He knows the life that he's lived. He knows that he has no justification to be there. He knows what he deserves. He deserves punishment from God. But he says, Lord, have mercy on me. Please don't punish me to the extent that I deserve. And at this point, he's so sorrowful, he doesn't even ask for grace. He just asks for mercy. And beats his chest there by himself. And doesn't even feel like he's worthy to lift his eyes up towards heaven. And as they're looking and thinking about these two and this contrast that Jesus puts out there, Jesus tells them, which one, or ask them, which one do you think is going to be right before God? Which one? Which one is the righteous person? Or actually the term that he uses is, which one was justified? Now that's the term we use as United Methodist, justification. And what that, that term means for us and back then was, was being treated just as if, that's where that term comes from, just as if we had not sinned. Jesus says, which of them from God's viewpoint, was justified. Which of them will God treat as if they haven't sinned? The one that says, I'm better than everybody? The one that says, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like all the, the other scumbags that are out there? Lord, I'm not, thank you that I'm not like the people that don't go to church? Thank you that I'm not like the whatevers? Or the one that's beating his chest looking down because he doesn't even feel like he can look to heaven and saying I am such a bad sinner that the only place I've got to come to is you I'm such a bad sinner that I'm not even asking for good I'm just pleading for mercy I'm such a bad sinner that I don't even have anything to offer you I cannot talk about how good I am because I'm just that sinner. Jesus says, that's the one that's justified. Not the one that prayed about himself, the one that prayed for himself. Not the one who was talking about all the blessings they've received and all the good that they do and, and all the rules that they follow, but the one that says, Lord, I'm a sinner. I can't do it on my own. Only you can save me. I know what I deserve. Don't give me what I deserve. I'm coming to you. That, and, and because that's what God wants. When you are like the Pharisees and you come and say, look at what I've done. I'm not like everybody else because I don't do the things that they do. I'm not like everyone else. You know, I make sure that, that I tithe. I fast. I do all these things on the outside to prove how holy I am. To prove how holy I am. To show all of it for show and to demonstrate that I'm not like everybody. And even my prayers are not about my need to have God in my life, but to tell God why He needs to bless me in my life. Because that's the way the Pharisees thought. The Pharisees thought that they were kind of spiritual accountants. All the good stuff you did versus all the bad stuff that you might do. And if, if, you're, if your good side's enough bigger and, and, and your balance is good enough, God owes you the blessings, the salvation, the life in heaven, and all those things. Because what you did. Jesus trying to tell them that's not the way that it works. God offers us his salvation, not because of what we do, what we're able to accomplish, the things we're, that we can demonstrate, 
we offer the, he offers that to us because we are sinners and we cannot do it on our own. Now that doesn't mean that we're not to be able to do in some of those things, but the difference is the Pharisee was saying, it's all about me. I'm not doing this even to, I'm not fasting twice a week to honor God. I'm fasting twice a week so that everybody can see that I'm fasting twice a week. You know, I'm saying my prayers out in front of, the, of everybody so that they can see what a good prayer person I am. You know, the, the, the strength of my prayers or the way that I can talk to God and, and, and all of those things and that they can hear through my prayers how great I am. And that's not what God wants. Actually, when Jesus is talking about that in Matthew, he says, don't do that. Go home. Be by yourself. Pray between just you and God. He said, then your prayers are heard by the one that matters. Not the people on the street, but the one in, that made the people on the street. And, you know, we look at this, these passages like this, the one in Matthew, the ones in Luke and Mark and all the rest. And... Sometimes we don't see ourselves, but we all have a tendency to be that way. And we forget that we are sinners. We are, are sinners saved by grace. Because we come to God and we say, I can't do it on my own. I can't be perfect. What I have to offer is just me. Including all that dirty baggage that I have to bring along. That I'm just a sinner. Lord, have mercy on me. That's a prayer that we should always pray. Lord, I make my mistakes. I've not always done everything right. Please forgive me. When we say that, we are asking for mercy. Because if we don't get forgiveness, we get judgment. And that's what, what we're trying to avoid. But it doesn't come by what we do. It comes by our faith, our trust, our hope. It comes from looking to God for who He is. Not looking to God for who we are. And not, especially not telling God how good I am. We do that so that we remember, as, as I said in the book of Romans, that all sin and fall short of the glory of God. All is pretty inclusive. I think that means everybody. Uh, all of us and, and everybody else. And so we need to remember that, you know, we can't do it. We are to follow the rules. Our lives are to be changed. We do those things because we are sinners saved by grace. Not to show God how that we are good and that He owes us grace. Because He doesn't owe us anything. You know, and every time I read this passage, I, I think about that, you know, the, the song that they always played at the Billy Graham things. You know, if you've ever watched any Billy Graham shows or, or any of his crusades, what's the song they play at the end? Yes. Just as I am, what? Without one plea. That's the tax collector. He had no plea to bring. And that's what the writer of that song was reminding us. We don't either. And so we don't want to get to thinking that we're better than, than anybody else because the only difference between them and us, they're sinners, we're sinners. We're sinners saved by grace. That's the only difference. And that's not our grace. That's through the grace of God. And so we need to, but we have that tendency to set ourselves up, to think better of ourselves. We have that tendency to, to think that we're doing real well, and sometimes even to the point that, that God owes us. And, but that's not, we can never do enough for God to owe us. He, he gave us life today. What else can we ask for today? He gave us life yesterday. He gives us the things we've prayed about this morning with our friends and our families, and our, the, the clothes on our back and the food on our table and, and all of those things. What do we give him? You know, there's nothing wrong with what the Pharisee did if he was doing it for God. If he was doing it for himself. As a demonstration. And then telling everybody. You know, when, when we do those things, that's between us and God. Jesus says, don't let the right hand know what the left Don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Because it's that, uh, that's what it's all about. So, you know, as we go out and we see people that are out there. 
that are also sinners. Maybe they don't know about grace yet. That's our message. Because it doesn't matter how bad you've been. The tax collector was the worst people that they considered to be in all of Israel. If he can be saved, everybody else can too. And, and for us to, to look at people and say, you know, there's just another sinner. They need mercy. They need grace. And the best thing we can do is to, is to not think about that we're better than they are, but to think I'm the same as they are. And the best I can do is not tell them how good I am, tell them how good God is, and bring them in so that they know, so that they can know about that mercy, so that they can know about that grace. That if somebody comes in the back door, you know, when we look at them, do we judge them? Or do we just see another sinner that needs grace, that may be here to beat their chest, to look down and to say, Lord, I don't have any to offer but me and to welcome them in because that was part of the, the issue the, the, the point Jesus is making don't think that we're better than others but also don't look down on the others that are looking for Christ to welcome them in and to bring them in so that they can be here you know the the Abraham Lincoln said one time, after, right towards the, the end of his life, he was having a, a cabinet meeting over how, what to do, how to treat the South when the war was over. It was getting down pretty close to it, and, uh, and he's actually having an argument with his cabinet and said, because Lincoln wanted to treat them gently, welcome them back, say we're brothers and sisters, let's forget what's happened and let's move on, make the country uh, what it ought to be. And one of, his, one of his cabinet members said, they are enemies. They need to be destroyed. We beat them, and they are less than us. They are enemies. They need to be destroyed. Lincoln said, what better way is there to, to destroy your enemy than to make them your friend? That's part of the point that Jesus is making here. When we look down at somebody... Or welcome them in and to know that that we're who we are because of the grace of God but we're just the same as everybody else out there and rather than judge to see them as an opportunity to, to know Christ to be one of us and to help them along that way don't leave them in the corner by themselves beating their chest but to put your arm around them and say here I am Let's, let's do this together and welcome home to your family. So now let's stand up and join our voices as we prepare to meet the world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for that amazing grace that, that reached out to us when we 
we're beating our chest and looking down and thinking of all the sins that, that we have committed and to know that you raised us up and set us on the way, forgave us, justified us, Lord, and, and so that we might have that time with you on this earth and throughout all of eternity. Help us to, as we see others, to Lord, to know that we're, we're no different than anybody else that's out there. That we're saved by your grace, and your grace is there for the others around us when we help to share that grace, that they might know you for that 10,000 years and beyond. Lord, to know that your grace upon this earth, as well as that, that grace that, that lasts. Lord, as we go out these doors, help us to see, help us to, to do, and help us to have the attitudes that we see others as in much in need of salvation as we are, that we might reach out to them, to welcome them in to that, to that home of grace. For it's in Jesus' name that we go, we live, and we pray. Amen.